Welcome again to another uh, 10 questions with Jamie. Um, as you, uh, those following us, they know that we uh, sit down with uh, somebody that, that's with Asbury uh, or at least tied with Asbury uh, Free Methodist Church. And today uh, we're with Paul Cowie. Uh, Paul, thanks for joining us here today. Well, it's great to be with you, Jamie. All right. uh, so for our viewers, we're trying to get to know uh, people a little bit better. Um, with these lockdowns and semi-lockdowns, it's tough to really get true fellowship, but uh, what we're trying to do is kind of stay connected. So uh, that's what we're going to do here today with you, Paul. Great. Uh, Paul, uh, can you tell us, start off by telling us where you were born? I was uh, born and raised in Perth, Ontario, uh, ironically about a block and a half from the church. Uh, okay. Lived in that house for for little over 20 years and I even attended the CYC program at the church way back when so who who knew I was going to return there eventually yeah. years later yeah uh, um, I'm from the area myself and I actually uh, attended the CYC uh, Elsie used to look after it and uh, yeah, it exactly years ago and uh, yeah memory lane yeah oh, good um, can you can you share with us one one of your favorite types of music Paul um Kind of like uh, 70s uh, rock, I suppose, uh, or 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, got a soft spot for uh, disco, uh, the uh, Bee Gees, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of like Herman's Hermits too. So mm -hmm. clean lyrics, uh, like the music, and uh, I won't say I can dance like Travolta, but anyway, close enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, it's the good, <laughs> the good classic stuff, though, right? The classic rock and roll. You can't go wrong with that. Simple yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you had mentioned that you're from born, born and raised from the area and actually not too far from the church, you had said. Um, do you have um, a favorite childhood memory that sticks out um, to you and, and that you could share with us here today? Like uh, a lot of uh, young, young lads in a small town, you get into sports. So uh, I, I suppose I uh, played a lot of baseball. So those were my favorite memories. I was on a traveling team. Uh, we were able to uh, travel across uh, Ontario, I guess, and uh, and I made a lot of wonderful friendships from those uh, days of baseball. Some of those friends I still have uh, with me now. So it'd be baseball memories, practicing baseball, hanging out with the baseball guys, and uh, uh, just wonderful experience, wonderful memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse from the area too. It's a uh, kind of a, a smaller area, Paul, as you know, and you know you develop friendships that. Um, seem to last and uh, there's a camaraderie there and year after year summer after summer right yeah 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 great memory um now when it comes to fiction or non-fiction paul uh, this can be books movies you know etc uh do you have do you prefer one over the other um i'm more of a newspaper guy instead of a book guy I, i've read some obviously but i I kind of like the shorter stuff, so I, I'm more of a newspaper, electronic, or paper, mm -hmm. and especially stuff on corporations and that with my background, and mm -hmm. I enjoy hearing uh, strategies of companies. Mm -hmm. uh, from a movie standpoint, uh, I like comedy and action, but I'm a sucker for a good love story. Oh, yeah. It might even bring a tear to my eye, Jamie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not, not a fighter, but uh, a lover, right, Paul? Well, I don't know. I probably strike out on both, but I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 uh, I don't know. It's just something about uh, somebody, even though it's fictional, something about somebody being happy at the end. It catches me, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, again, going back, back down memory lane, Paul, uh, as a small child, can you recall, is there ever anything that you wanted to be? Uh, you know, I'm talking even preschool or just the, the early years of your life. Was there anything you wanted to aspire to be? Uh, I, I probably was maybe a bit immature and self-absorbed a little bit. I, I never, I just enjoyed having a good time. So I never really thought about it much. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're through high school into college. Uh, I, I didn't know what to do. So I, I just went into uh accounting and finance, the same mm -hmm. as uh, a friend of mine at the time did, and I, I made a career out of it. Yeah, good. good. That's so, that's, yeah, that's nothing wrong with that, and, you know, that's the idea of being a kid, is to be a kid, right? And just enjoy every day. and Low expectations, I guess, yeah. and not thinking too much at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Now, if, if you could choose to do anything for a day, Paul, um, money, time, not on, uh, they're not, uh, they're, they're, it's not an option you have to worry about. Uh, what would it be? Well, I'm excited you're going to pick up the tab. Um, <laughs> For, for a day, uh, other than to see my kids out west, we just got back from uh, out west in October. I've got two boys out there. So besides that, huh? I want to go out in left field a little bit and say it'd be kind of neat to go down to Augusta, Georgia, and mm -hmm. to my wife and I watch the Masters on TV in April every year. Yeah. And it would be kind of neat uh, to watch one round of golf there and the... Uh, I don't know if you know the course well, but uh, each hole has a name and uh, uh, a lot of character around each hole on the course. Uh, beautiful azaleas, and uh, it would be nice after all these years of watching it on TV to actually live it out for one day. And since you're picking the tab up, I'm yeah, excited. Right. Well, dinner's on that as well, Paul. Oh, thanks, Jamie. <laughs> uh, the restaurants are open there, are they? Well, yeah, I know, really, eh? Uh, I have a few friends that go down. Um, they, there's three or four of them that happened to, to stumble across tickets, and they went down, and they told me they just had the time of their life. Now, they're big golf golfers as well, and it meant a lot to them to have the opportunity to do that. But they said just the, the golf course itself and, and the clubhouse, everything, just immaculate. And, uh, immaculate, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. So uh, I'm, I'm sure you would have a great time that, uh, that day, a uh, 24-hour period. Be nice, and sharing it with my wife would be nice. Oh, yes, Lord. Um, now, moving to some of the biblical side of things, um, Paul, would you happen to have a favorite Bible verse? Um, so I have a couple, but I'll, I'll focus on the one and uh, we'll see about the other one after. Sure. Um, in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 12, verse 41, is, uh, I've always loved this uh, little section here, and it's right at the end of Mark. Can I, can I read it okay, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, please. So Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. And that just uh, melts my heart uh, to see um, the, uh, two, two small copper coins weren't worth, almost worthless, and she put everything she had into the treasury and put her trust in the Lord uh, for her provision. And it's a lesson for me in my life, a very humbling lesson, um, what things maybe I'm, I'm putting uh, in, in, in lead in my life instead of the Lord. Yeah. So uh, it's a wonderful lesson in the, in the, in the Bible. I, and I've always loved that verse right from the early days of coming to faith in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very, yeah. Uh, very uh, impactful. Uh, you know, give what you can. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the number necessarily isn't the important thing. It's, it's what your heart, what's in your heart, right? And you're giving everything that you can give. Um, yeah, uh, it's just about the trust, I think, Jamie. Uh, it, it's, it's it, you know, the other folks gave lots of funds too, but she put in everything she had and, uh, yeah. and decided to, you know, put her trust in, in, in God. And that's yeah. the, that's the main part of the lesson. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I've been drawn to that scripture. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, yeah. Um, <clears throat> carrying on, uh, on in the biblical side of things here, um, who, uh, what or who had the biggest impact on you in your Christian journey? Okay, um, I'll, I'll give a quick shout out to three. On, uh, yeah. Some people may only have one. Um, yeah. When I first come to know the Lord, <laughs> uh, there were a group in a Bible study uh, who actually fasted for me and, uh, and, and, uh, the Lord answered their prayer. And, uh, shortly thereafter I came to faith. Um, so I went to their Bible study, uh, Chris and Betsy Simpson's, uh, out of Carlton place. Um, they were there, uh, to, uh, answer questions, uh, along with my wife, who was the second person, uh, they were patient with me, uh, you don't automatically know everything when you come to faith in Christ. It's a, it's a process over life. 
and you have a lot of uh, questions. For example, I, I didn't know there was just one Bible. I thought there was 40 some Bibles and I didn't know how I was going to get through all those Bibles. Yeah. So you, you don't know everything. And, uh, and it's wonderful to have people come alongside of you. And that brings the third person, our pastor at the time at Asbury was John Baker. Yeah. And he invested in me. He uh, made me a part of his life and a part of, uh, uh, some of the things uh, you do, you saw his example along with the other folks I mentioned and uh, as they imitate Christ and it becomes inspiring to watch them and you, you know, you want to, you have an example and a lesson uh, to follow as they imitate Christ. So uh, those three people, uh, the, the Simpsons, my wife and John Baker, uh, wonderful folks and uh, anybody coming to know the Lord, it's wonderful. We can put people there to be friends to them and uh, and, and help them to develop in their faith and not rush them along. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's an important thing. It's a process, like he said, um, day by day, you know, everyone's journey travels um, at different speeds, which is fine. And um, it's great that um, you were able to have, you know, three or four um, individuals that had that impact on you. Um, it must have been um, nice knowing that, you know, there was multiple people in your life that were, you know, helping you out and arm in arm, if you will, uh, figuratively speaking on your journey, especially at the beginning. So that's, that's great. And you have a lot of questions. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for letting us know and uh, sharing that with us. So, um, now other than Jesus, Paul, from the Bible, who would you want to spend a day with? Okay. Um, I went with Peter, okay. uh, a normal guy I can relate to with good intentions. Um, you see his uh, character develop over time through the Bible. Uh, you, you start off with Peter uh, uh, trying to walk uh, on water. Uh, nobody gives him credit for getting out of the boat. Yeah. Uh, he, he tried to. His faith maybe didn't catch up with him. Um, you see him, uh, on the, I think it's on a mountain, uh, while Jesus is doing the uh, uh, with I think it's Elijah and Moses, the transfiguration. Mm -hmm. uh, and he wants to set up a tent, I think, or, or some kind of a campsite or of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, might be a little silly when Jesus is in his glorified state. Mm -hmm. um, you see Jesus being arrested and uh, everybody disperses, but not Peter. But he denies Jesus three times. So out of fear uh, of repercussions. So he, you see Peter in that state. I see a wonderful heart there. I see uh, someone who steps up, but maybe just doesn't have all the everything he needs yet. And then you move into when Jesus uh, is taken into heaven and 50 days later at uh, Pentecost, you see a different Peter when the Holy Spirit comes along and, uh, and they're filled with the Spirit. And uh, Peter all of a sudden becomes the spokesperson for the group. And tells the people who think they're drunk that they're not and explains everything in the Bible from uh, uh, all the prophecies through. And then you see Peter uh, heal people. You see him arrested and uh, in front of the, uh, taken to the Sanhedrin. Um, he has a vision on a roof, uh, a dream about the, uh, 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 the Gentiles being grafted in, I guess, and, uh, and that it's okay to eat, uh, is it? hoofed animals or whatever it is. I can't remember the exact story. So yeah. I see a, a huge transition of, uh, of Peter's character and I can relate to him. He was also in Jesus inner core. You could see the love he had for Jesus yeah. and that transition. And it'd be wonderful to talk to him from the start to the end where you see he's a leader of the church and a well-respected man. And the Holy spirit uh, uh, comes fills him and, and, and uh, supplies in him what he might have lacked early on in his, uh, in his ministry. So uh, it's a beautiful picture. I'd love to chat with him about it. And he's a guy yeah. I can relate to. Yeah. 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 Good choice. And um, you know, that um, if you were to spend a day with that individual, Peter, um, obviously what information and how uh, just to be able to pick his brain, right. And, you know, to get a better understanding and, um, and, and he's also an individual that many people can relate to. I mean, there, there's ups and downs in Peter's life, Peter's journey, and we all experience ups and downs, right? Uh, his faith uh, was so strong that sometimes stubbornness came out. 
from it, uh, which, you know, we all uh, experience that from time to time as well, right? So, um, yeah, I, I'm sure there wouldn't be a dull moment in that, uh, in that day, Paul. Um, good choice, good choice. Uh, now, before we say goodbye uh, to our viewers, Paul, uh, today, uh, what encouraging message would you like to pass on to the next generation? I think um, I think the message for the next generation is the same message that each generation has had. Uh, lean into the Lord. Uh, we were meant to live this life with the Lord with us, leading yeah. and guiding us. Read your Bibles and pray. Um, find whatever creative way uh, that you can have that relationship. One thing I do, uh, and I did it today, I'll go for a drive. Uh, maybe It was Westport uh, earlier in the week. I went to... Uh, uh, through Lombardy to Smith Falls and uh, uh, with COVID on and uh, different things going on. It gives me a form, a quiet form where I can relax, but I can pour my heart out to the Lord in prayer. And, uh, and it just empties myself of every concern and every worry. And I know God uh, uh, hears me and uh, it brings a peace and a calm. So my uh, my advice in summary to the next generation is the same, uh, lean on the Lord, uh, read your Bible and pray. And you were meant to have that relationship with the Lord, uh, not to live life apart from him. So lean on him. He's there. He loves you immensely. And, uh, and that brings wonderful comfort and peace. Yeah. 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 What wonderful message, um, you know, to the, to the next generation. I like how you said every generation, uh, cause you know, you hit, uh, bang on with that um, and uh, a great message to pass on to our next generation um, I hope some of our viewers uh, uh, in the next generation take take that advice and, and implement it and can't go wrong with it so um, thank you uh, thank you for sharing that um, folks um, as we uh, about to say goodbye today um, again to uh, another 10 questions with Jamie Paul again I would like to thank you for joining us here it's been a pleasure um, I'm sure the viewers are going to get to know you just a little bit better through um, the dialogue we just shared together. Uh, so thank you for, for taking time uh, and spending it with me today. It was great spending time with you, Jamie. Awesome. Awesome. Well, to the viewers out there, thank you again for joining us. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it uh, as much as Paul and I had, had uh, enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, until next time, uh, God bless. God bless. God bless.